Hello well, ladies and gents, I'm Bruce Jury Reaction and this is Why Blue Whales Don't Get Cancer, Peter's Paradox. Hmm, I didn't know Blue Whales Don't Get Cancer. This is by the channel Kuzgazat in a nutshell. Yeah, cancer is a creepy and mysterious thing. While we try to understand it, to get better at killing it, we discover a biological paradox that remains unsolved to this day. Large animals seem to be immune to cancer. What? Really? So, b blue whales, elephants don't get cancer, huh? Which doesn't make any sense. The bigger a being, the more cancer it should have. To understand why, we first need to take a look at the nature of cancer itself. Yeah, I mean, a cancer is just, you know, in simplest term, cancer is just cells that went rogue or something. I mean, it happens to any animal. So why not the big one? If anything, big ones should have more cells because, you know, their body has more cells. They are bigger. So they have more chances of creating more cancer cell, right? This is weird. This is by the, this is the channel Khosgazan in a nutshell. Uh, you know, it's a great science channel. I'll react to this channel every day. I react to this channel every day. Uh, so I've reacted to quite a few videos from them already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist I've rooted for it. Khosgazan reacts or something like that. Check out the playlist too, like Real Life Lore, CGP Grey, Internet Historian, all the sarcastic production. And yeah, let's do this one. This video might get blocked because some of the videos from this channel get gets blocked. So I have to put checker box there. But if it's an issue, there's a link in the description, original link in the description. Click on that and I guess play it side by side. Yeah, let's do this one. Cancer is a creepy and mysterious thing. In the process of trying to understand it, to get better at killing it, we discovered a biological paradox that remains unsolved to this day. Large animals seem to be immune to cancer, which doesn't make any sense. The bigger a being, the more cancer it should have. To understand why, we first need to take a look at the nature of cancer itself. Our cells are protein robots made out of hundreds of millions of parts. Guided only by chemical reactions, they create and dismantle structures, sustain a metabolism to gain energy, or make almost perfect copies of themselves. We call these complex chemical reactions pathways. They are biochemical networks upon networks, intertwined and stacked on top of each other. Most of them can barely be comprehended by a single human mind and yet they function perfectly, until they don't. With billions of trillions of reactions happening in thousands of networks over many years, the question is not if something will go wrong, but when. Tiny mistakes add up until the grandiose machinery gets corrupted. To prevent this from getting out of hand, our cells have kill switches that make them commit suicide. Oh, okay. But these kill switches... So our cells are not stable in that sense. There is a, you know, just basically, uh, you know, but there are so many cells that eventually some cells will go bad. I mean, that's just mess, I guess. So, you know, a, cells basically kills themselves. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know the efficiency rate is that low, like cells just go wrong. I mean, it's gonna happen to any cell. I thought that there has to be something wrong with the cell, but it could happen to any cell, apparently. Twitches are not infallible. If they fail, a cell can turn into a cancer cell. Ah. Most of them are slain by the immune system very quickly. But this is a numbers game. Given enough time, a cell will accrue enough mistakes, slip by unnoticed, and begin making more of itself. All animals have to deal with this problem. In yeah, okay, so we have cancer cell, regardless of what. But immune system kills it. Sometimes immune system can't, and it creates a tumor, which means accumulation of cancer cells. That makes sense. In general, the cells of different animals are the same size. The cells of a mouse yeah. aren't smaller than yours. It just has fewer cells in total and a shorter lifespan. Fewer cells and a short life means a lower chance of things going wrong or cells mutating. Or at least it should mean that. Humans live about 50 times longer and have 1,000 times more cells than mice. Yet the rate of cancer is basically the same in humans and in mice. Even weirder, blue what? whales with about 3,000 times more cells than humans don't seem to get cancer at all, really. This is Peto's paradox, the baffling realization that large animals have much, much less cancer than they should. Scientists think there are two main ways of explaining the paradox, evolution and hypertumors. Solution one, evolve or become a blob of cancer. 
as multicellular beings. Yeah, first of all, evolved thing kind of makes sense because, I mean, you know, big creatures basically would have more cancer cell. So the cancer issue would be more stronger in them. So obviously they would die out. But some of them resist, basically creates immune system stronger to fight cancer. And those are the only animal that survived. Every other just died out. So evolution is the reason that, you know, basically big animals have stronger resistance to cancer or something. That makes sense. Beings developed 600 million years ago, animals became bigger and bigger, which added more and more cells and hence more and more chances that cells could be corrupted. So the collective had to invest in better and better cancer defenses. The ones that did not died out. But cancer doesn't just happen, it's a process that involves many individual mistakes and mutations in several specific genes within the same cell. These genes are called proto-oncogenes, and when they mutate, it's bad news. For example, with the right mutation, a cell will lose its ability to kill itself. Another mutation, and it will develop the ability to hide. Another, and it will send out calls for resources. Another one, and it will multiply quickly. These oncogenes have an antagonist though, tumor suppressor genes. They prevent these critical mutations from happening or order the cell to kill itself if they decide it's beyond repair. It turns out that large animals have an increased number of them. Because of this, elephant cells require more mutations than mice cells to develop a tumor. They are not immune, but more resilient. This adaption probably comes with a cost in some form, but researchers still aren't sure what it is. Maybe tumor suppressors make elephants age quicker later in life or slow down how quickly injuries heal. We don't know yet. But the solution to the paradox may actually be something different. Hypertumors. Solution 2. I mean, yeah, evolution makes sense because, you know, obviously bigger animals because of tumors, you know, whichever animal could not fight back died out and others had to fight back. They developed the system to fight back. So yeah, they are more resilient to that. What the hell's a hypertumor? Just the name alone scares me. Hypertumors. Yes, really. Hypertumors are named after hyperparasites, the parasites of parasites. Hypertumors are the tumors of tumors. Cancer can be thought- Okay, they're a pa parasite of parasite. Okay, <laughs> look at that. Parasites. Hypertumors are the tumors of tumors. Cancer can be thought of as a breakdown in cooperation. Normally, yeah. cells work together to form structures like organs, tissue, or elements of the immune system. But cancer cells are selfish and only work for their own short-term benefit. If they're successful, they form tumors, huge cancer collectives that can be very hard to kill. Making a tumor is hard work, though. Millions or billions of cancer cells multiply rapidly, which requires a lot of resources and energy. The amount of nutrients they can steal from the body becomes the limiting factor for growth. So the tumor cells trick the body to build new blood vessels directly to the tumor to feed the thing killing it. And here, the nature of cancer cells may become their own undoing. Cancer cells are inherently unstable and so they can continue to mutate, some of them faster than their buddies. If they do this for a while, at some point, one of the copies of the copies of the original cancer cell might suddenly think of itself as an individual again and stop cooperating. Which means, idea. just like the body, the original tumor suddenly becomes an enemy, fighting for the same scarce nutrients and resources. So the newly mutated cells can create a hypertumor. Instead of helping, they cut off the blood supply to their former buddies, which will starve and kill the original cancer cells. Cancer is killing cancer. This process can repeat. Damn, uh, yeah, that is clever, isn't it? I mean, obviously, cancer, cancer cells are the cells that didn't want to die out, so it became its own thing. Tried to take resources by creating veins and everything, and went under mutation or mutation. That one of those cancers are like, oh, you know what? I'm even more different than you. So now it starts to attack the, the original cancer cell, and another, you know, another tumor becomes it's a hyper tumor, whatever. But uh, I don't know why that. That's what still scares me. I mean, is this a, the a theoretical thing, or did they found something like this? Over and over, and this may prevent cancer from becoming a problem for a large organism. 
it is possible. Yeah, but if you have the original cancer tumor and now there's a hyper tumor killing it, then you have another tumor to worry about. I mean, yeah, original tumor got killed, but what about the newer one? Now the newer one is gonna have a hyper tumor of its own cell and the cycle will constantly continue. But tumors will not go away, will they? I mean, I understand in the bigger animals, if, if this happens at a, a similar rate, because, you know, cells in uh, humans and the big whale is the same, so timing would be the same. So, so to, to, to them, that timing is nothing. So, you know, uh, this cycle is like nothing to them and tumors are going to be smaller compared to their body. So this process of, you know, tumor coming to be and hypertumor coming, killing that and hypertumor of that, killing that and just cycle will continue before they realize. I understand that. But, you know, in humans, this must be, this is an issue already, isn't it? Because uh, the cycle would basically kill us because we don't have much time. We don't have that big of a body to be like, yeah, it's nothing. ...that large animals have more of these hypertumors than we realize. They might just not become big enough to notice. Yeah. Which makes sense. A 2-gram tumor is 10% of a mouse's body weight, while it's less than 0.002% of a human. I mean, that is not nothing. I mean, to us, it's still an issue. A tumor creates a hypertumor, and they, by, by now, our body must be fucked. So we can't survive that cycle. Blue whales probably can. And 0.000002% of a blue whale. All three tumors require the same number of cell divisions and have the same number of cells. So an old blue whale might be filled with tiny cancers and just not care. There are other proposed solutions to Peto's paradox, such as different metabolic rates or different cellular architecture. But right now we just don't know. Scientists are working on the problem. Figuring out how large animals are so resilient to one of the most deadly diseases we know could open the path. Yeah, I mean, metabolic rate is slow. So, you know, they would suck energy at slower pace. So tumors would do the same thing. So it would take longer time for tumor to become a problem. Who knows? Because bigger things, like we saw in the video, bigger things have slower metabolism than the smaller things. To new therapies and treatments. Cancer has always been a challenge. Today, Tell we it. are finally beginning to understand it, and by doing so, one day, we might finally DNS overcome it. This video was sponsored by you. If you yeah. C cancer has been a challenge. It's a scary thing, man. I think one of the most scary thing about, you know, our biology. The one thing that nobody can do anything about, only way to, you know, basically get cure of that is damaging your body by something like chemotherapy. It's just scary all around. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we can figure out, uh, you know, how these things, uh, tumor, hypertumor, things like that work in blue whales, maybe we could create some kind of a makeshift uh, small cure. Not cure, but, you know, I guess at least something that would help out eventually. So that is something. I mean, I feel like, you know, in a few decades, you know, just three, four decades, we must know something that makes cancer not as deadly because we have something now, just like how chemotherapy works lots of times. We would have something that, we, you know, we basically inject ourselves and at the molecular, it, at the molecular level, you know, uh, DNA and things, it, it tries to suppress the cancer. So if it not goes away, at least it stays suppressed, like how it happens in the whales. I mean, we could figure something out like that. That would be something. Because, you know, uh, there are lots of people who has basically, you know, uh, lots of uh, different type of sexual disease. But we we figure something out that suppresses that. So people live the life with the disease and never uh, have to worry about dying. Same thing could happen to cancer. Who knows? Alright people, that was why blue whales don't get cancer. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast for the playlist. Check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.